Alright, what's up YouTube? It's RS Mario here, and I'm gonna go into something I don't usually do, and that's really opinionated videos. I mean, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't do really opinionated videos, like, oh, this is my opinion. I mean, I do theories and things like that, but I don't really do these really super opinionated videos. You know, just almost rant style videos, but, um... I over the Thanksgiving, you know, over Thanksgiving, I heard, um, I listened to, um, a podcast, you know, and this is big in wrestling, like, this is one of the biggest stories, I mean, the story is so big that it's actually on Facebook's trending news thing in the corner, you know, and, um, it's huge, and it's CM Punk, and he was on the Art of Wrestling podcast, which is Call Cabana's podcast, which is awesome, by the way. If you're a wrestling fan, check out Art of Wrestling once. It's pretty. It's actually pretty cool, you know. But um, he was on the Art of Wrestling podcast to tell the story of why he left WWE. The thing people, the question people have been asking since last, well, since January, people have been asking the question of why, why Punk did you leave WWE, especially right before the biggest paycheck of the year. So um. <clears throat> So, um, he kind of tells the story why in this two hour long podcast of why he left. And, um, you know, I mean, like most of these, you know, you know, type of interviews, it's kind of a shoot. It's kind of a shoot. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the KFAB Chronicle stuff that you see on YouTube, you know, uh, where all of these like, out, you know, like the, the out of business guys, like, you know, <clears throat> Like, <clears throat> like Sean Waltman or, um, you know, New Jack, Bob Holly do these interviews where they talk crap about a bunch of people and they talk crap about, well, they sometimes they talk crap about WWE if they don't have any further financial uh, interest in the company or whatever, you know, and um, they get paid to do it. Punk just did it for free for a different reason, which I'm going to get into later in the video. Um, but... Yeah, he did this video, he talked all this stuff, and um, that's really about it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to dissect both sides. I'm going to knock this out right now. Dirt of E can suck. They, it can. And, I mean, it's a business, and businesses, they, they, they do these things. You know, so we know sometimes Dirt of E sucks. It happens. You know, I mean, it's just, that that's reality. I mean, WWE's not the best company ever in the world. You know, um, I mean, the, the product isn't even the best product in the world. You know, I mean, three-hour Raw is, uh, sometimes it's hard watching three-hour Raw because sometimes Raw is just horrible, which is one of the reasons why I stopped doing Raw reaction videos because I didn't want to sit down for three hours and watch Raw. Sometimes I literally, sometimes I purposely skip Raw on Monday and watch it on Hulu the next day so I can watch it, you know, in an hour and a half or so, you know. But, um, yeah, WWE can suck sometimes. And, you know, there is politics in WWE. We all know this. You know, I mean, we've heard all the stories and stuff. So, just getting that out of the way, we know that WWE has the capability to do some of the things that Punk is talking about. But, not all of these things. Alright, so I'm going to get into this. We're going to get into talking about CM Punk. If you're a Punk fan, you're probably going to hate me after this. So, I'm going to give you some time to either leave the video. Because I'm about to get in to CM Punk. So, here we go. Alright, so... CM Punk reminds me of Gregory House. You ever seen House? The, the, the show about the Doctor House. House is a awesome doctor. He's one of the best doctors. He's, he's, he's entirely skilled at diagnosing all these random diseases that people have. And he's a spot on doctor. But the thing that always screws him over or holds him back or gets him in trouble is the fact that he's an asshole. I mean, and he's the main character of the show, but he's a total asshole, and the things he does, you know, are not just, like, asshole things, some of them are, like, why, like, like, that was one of the, I mean, House was an awesome show, but one of the bad points about the show was some of the stuff House did was not just douchey, it was just unnecessary, you know, 
like flood like oh I'm gonna take these tickets and shove them in the toilet and flood the toilet and you know you know and, and destroy like the, the piping system in the ceiling and you know have the ceiling cave in which will then you know violate my parole so I mean it's like really you know that's a spoiler by the way I'm kind of sorry about that but you know if, if you're watching house on Netflix or something I did kind of drop that I am sorry about that but um you know some of the stuff was ridiculous that house did and they went to ridiculous you know links to show that house was that much of an asshole you know and um and you know punk reminds me of house you know punk like you know you you know he talks about in the promo how and it is a promo by the way he says it's not a promo but i mean actually let's pause this real quick and let's go into exactly why he does this 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 um this shoot interview you know this interview with Colt Cabana and there's three reasons he does it one he you know because he could he says you know a couple times that some you know, people would have paid him pretty good money to do an interview like this for them because everybody wanted to know this story like if this was this would have probably been the first KFAB Chronicles DVD that I would have bought because I would want to know this story even though on those DVDs you can believe about 50% of what they're saying because, you know, like in wrestling or in anything else, if you're getting paid, you're getting paid to make this look good. So, of course, they're going to tell some of the real stuff and then they're going to tell some bull crap to make the DVD look good. And that's the stuff that they're going to put in the trailer that you see on YouTube so you can come and buy the, the shoot DVD. So he bypasses all that and gives it a whole nother shade of believability because it's free. He's not making any money. There's no reason for him to lie here because guess what? It's free. He's not gonna make. It's not gonna do anything for him if a thousand people watch it or if two people. I mean, if a thousand people listen to it or if two people listen to it. So you know, having a free, having telling this all, all this epic story for free is is you know a, a way of getting that information out there to more people and giving it believability three the reason why he did this podcast was of course to help promote his friends podcast you know call cabana's podcast the art of wrestling which is actually pretty good you know so those are really reasons why this is a free podcast and this is not like you're not paying to watch this on watch this um interview on dvd and it is a shoot. He says, oh, this isn't a shoot on WWE. Yet, you know, yeah, this is a shoot, okay? I mean, it's some, a lot of it's probably truthful, but, dude, it's a shoot. Don't don't go there. But, um, but yeah, so, Punk brought a lot of the stuff on himself. And you know, he tells a lot of stories in this thing. Oh, like he had Mercer, and he had a big Mercer-like tumor thing on his back, and the doctors wouldn't cut it out. You know, and then, you know, he had to go to AJ's doctor after he quit, and his doctor said, you, you should have died on the road, you know, and, you know, I, some of the stories are kind of like bullcrap, like, I understand, I believe the story he's talking about being injured, like, you know, being hurt, and then having to come back, and, you know, work hurt, you know, and having to come back and work injured, and all that, I, I, now, I believe that, because I've never believed that John Cena was this workhorse that would come back six months out of a neck injury. I don't think anybody would be that insanely stupid or insanely, you know, all that that much of a company guy to come back and risk your career and your, you know, your your physical, you know, being to, to wrestle six months after breaking your neck. You know, I, I just don't believe that people would do that. You know, I believe that, you know, Cena was kind of pushed to come back early off some of these injuries. Um, I mean, I do believe that he does have a push and love for the company, but I think that, you know, he was, you know, he had some help <laughs> in coming back from some of these injuries. And, um, you know, I do believe that he talks about, oh, he had to work with a bum knee and the knee surgery that he had when he was champion and that he was trying to, you know, be the best champion, trying to show them that he's awesome and that he can be like John Cena. And, you know, he had that knee surgery back when he did the feud with Ryback. He had the knee surgery. 
and he says it's you know it's kind of because of you know a match he had with Cena where you know Cena tried to like roll on his belly and he had him in the mood a lot and it seemed to hurt him and himself at the same time or something like that I believe that you know and also he talks about um how you know he had the basically three weeks to come back from a knee surgery and do a, a match with Ryback and he says that Ryback is a big dangerous guy I, I can understand that too you know I, I could I mean that's probably real you know, Ryback probably is pretty dangerous in the ring. You know, I mean, he says that Ryback, um, you know, that, that he um, he kicked him in the ribs and broke his ribs. He kicked him as hard as he could and broke his ribs. Um, he said one time, you know, it was, you know, at the TLC match, you know, that he picked up, um, he went to do like a, a military press. He was supposed to, you know, guerrilla press punk through the table and he he literally missed the table like twice and threw him on the ground you know and then punk said he went to him and was like you know are, you know are you you know are you stupid or are you you know doing this you have to be doing this on purpose you know and then you know he said Ryback was like oh I'm stupid you know yeah and, and I mean I, that's probably believable you know but um some of the stuff in there is just not believable. Like, I'm not going to believe the Mercer thing. You know, like, he says he had Mercer. He had, like, a big purplish green, you know, growth on his back, you know, that was a big... And I've seen the Mercer, like, lumps. And what it is is basically, like, a bunch of, like, infectious pus. And usually once one, usually once you get the lump, it's, it's kind of bad. And, you know, you have to kind of get that taken care of. And they have to cut it open... And they have to squeeze out the punk. And, um, you know, now you would see something like that. Now, if Punk, you know, I, I don't really feel like going back and finding Punk video of right around that time. But if he would have had a purplish green growth on his back the size of a freaking baseball, somebody would have seen that since it's basically your job to be half naked to the world. You know, somebody would have seen a freaking purple green growth on your back that would have been seen by somebody you know no amount of makeup is going to cover that up and not to mention you know after getting thrown on the ground a bunch of times the makeup is going to come off and people are going to see the big purple lump on your back so um I, I don't believe that one you know I believe WWE they can be dicks to their talent when it comes to injuries and stuff but I don't think that they're going to let you come with an infectious disease like Mercer not only they can kill you, but also spread to the rest of the talent. You know, like WWE was pissed when Bob, or not Bob, when Bob Orton worked a match with Taker and Orton, and he had hepatitis. They were pissed. They fired Bob Orton, and Bob Orton has never been on. He, he was on WWE TV once, and that was like, you know, the incident was like, what, five years ago? You know, WWE is pretty pissed with Bob Orton. You know, and so they don't they don't really play this whole infectious disease thing because not only does it infect you, but also it will affect other people. So yeah, it's it's I, I don't buy that one for a minute, um, but I do buy him working injured, and even Kurt Cabana, like you know, even Kurt Cabana kind of says in the, in the interview that oh, you know, you don't think this is some of the stuff that happened to you is because you're an asshole. Because <laughs> you were an asshole to these people. And, you know, Punk kind of laughs and he kind of dodges it. But it's true, though. Like, some of the things that happened to Punk was because he was a dick to all these people. You know, it just it's, it's just like House. You know, like, like the, and then he gets mad about the, um, the, um, the clause, the, um, what are they called? The no compete clause. He gets mad about the no complete club. He's like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, why would you, why can you tell me what I can and can't do after I left the company? Well, I mean, you know, you wouldn't be, I mean, he said, and you, you, you pretty much had it, and, you know, your lawyer tell him that you don't have any interest in going to TNA, competing with WWE, yet you're mad about the compete clause, and you're training in jujitsu every day, which means you're not going to go to TNA, you're going to UFC. 
Like, you wouldn't be mad about the claws if you weren't planning, you know, if the claws wasn't in your way. Like, if you're happy and you're having the happiest time of your life, you're going to hockey games and chilling with your wife and doing all this other stuff, then you wouldn't be mad about the freaking no compete clause because, you know, you're happy doing what you're doing and you have money and you don't really care. The only reason you would care is because the clause is stopping you from doing something that you wanted to do. And that's go to UFC. He wants to go to UFC. You know. And I know that um, my neck beard is probably showing in this video a little bit. But, um, I mean, just the, the promo, like, I listened to that. I listened to the whole two-hour promo, like, two-hour interview last night. And, I mean, I got a lot of respect for Punk. And I did get a lot of kind of disdain for WWE. But, you know, a lot of it does sound like bullcrap, though. You know, and a lot of it sounds like... Would he exactly the opposite of what he was saying? Oh, this isn't like you know bitterness. This is just the story. This sounds like a KFAB Chronicles DVD, you know, that you put out for free. You know, and I'm still a fan of CEO Punk. You know, and of Punk anywhere he went, with the exception of the UFC, since I'm not a big fan of UFC. You know, I would still be a fan of Punk. Like I'm probably gonna buy Thor Annual now that Punk is writing it. Even though I like Thor anyway, I want to see how Punk writes. I would I would rather see Punk do something non-athletic. Because he obviously has an amazing mind. Like, he thought of all this stuff. And he thought the perfect way to get it at WWE. Well, you know, and, and without making himself look like he's, you know, just getting it at WWE. You know, I want to see what he can... I want to see what he can do for Hollywood. I want to see what he can do in comic books. I want to see, you know, his mind. I want to see him create something awesome. I want to see CM Punk succeed. I'm not one of those guys like, Oh, you know, you're going to fail. You're a quitter and you suck. And, you know, no, no. I st I'm still a fan of CM Punk. You know, I made a video about the man, for Christ's sake. But, um, you know, um... No, I mean, a lot of the stuff I, I do believe is bull crap, you know. And that's about it. So, that's about it. My This video ran way too long. I'm just long-winded. Sorry about that, people. You know, but, um, yeah, so, that's about it for this video. Um, if you guys still like me, you know, like the video, comment, you know, tell me, you know, tell me I'm right, tell me I'm full of shit, whatever. Um, but, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and keep it real.